Deformed Monsters, 1997. Directed by Charles Band. Starring Rhonda Griffin, Justin Lauer, and Phil Fondacaro. A goofy mad scientist tries bringing four of literature's most famous monsters to life in a desperate bid to take over the world. Something goes wrong, however, and they all come out three feet tall. Full disclosure, I've never been a Full Moon Pictures fan. They became a powerhouse in the 90s for producing low-budget titles with ridiculous premises, but they tend to make their films purposely bad, which I don't like. That being said, I do appreciate their enthusiasm for outlandish and imaginative premises and have enjoyed titles that they've released such as Arcade, so I always try approaching them with an open mind. I'll start with the bad. All the characters are written portrayed as bumbling idiots. Doesn't matter if it's a librarian, a private investigator, or a scientist with multiple degrees, they're all bumbling idiots. The librarian's supervisor is also a frustrated lesbian, which is supposed to be... funny? Sexy? I don't know what they're trying to go for here. Most of the monster makeup looks good, but the wolfman looks like a vampire bat for some odd reason. Phil Fondacaro acts as the leader of the monsters, with a terrible but entertaining attempt at a Transylvanian accent. He's made a career for himself as an extremely in-demand actor with dwarfism since the 80s. There's definitely a chance you've seen him in something. Being a 90s horror flick, there's random nudity in the scene. Because of course there is. This is very much an in-house production, with a lot of roles in the crew handled by people that have worked on countless other Full Moon films. To the film's credit, it does present a satisfactory resolution without resorting to all monsters are killed. I was pleasantly surprised by this. Unfortunately, this film is yet another example of a studio with the resources to do something great squandering it on mediocre offerings. It's a shame, really. In an alternate universe, Full Moon Pictures could have hired outside help and dominated the low-budget landscape in the 90s, instead of populating bargain bins. Verdict? Thumbs down. It wasn't easy for me to decide as I didn't outright hate this film, but I just can't recommend it. That concludes this week's review. If there's any obscure sci-fi or horror film you'd like to suggest, feel free to leave a comment below. Make sure to tune in next time for another thrilling low-budget adventure.